the warmest of welcomes back to Globetrotting. Be sure to subscribe if you are new to the channel. Any support would be greatly appreciated. The A380 and A358 Airbus represent two vastly different approaches to wide-body aircraft, but still in essence the same purpose, to meet the demands of airline customers right around the world. The A380 was launched in the early 2000s with a pretty clear ambition to be the world's largest passenger plane and meet growing demand for air travel into congested airports right around the world. Equipped with four engines and a passenger capacity not seen on any other aircraft type, the model aimed to be different and transform how airlines approached long-haul flying. On the other hand, the A350 launched almost a decade later. It was Airbus's answer to the industry's shift towards more fuel-efficient aircraft, longer-ranged planes that could effectively support more point-to-point travel rather than the hub-and-spoke model. With a focus on flexibility, airlines adopting the A350 have seen new opportunities that were not previously possible and certainly not with the A380 that came with a lot of additional baggage. But given these planes have served actually as a flagship widebody for many airlines at one point or another, what are the differences? Are there really any similarities in their story and what's next? Well, the most apparent difference would be the size of the A380 and A350, viewing it from just the outside and even internally with their capacity. The A380 is the largest passenger aircraft to be built and flying, with a seating capacity that can exceed 800 passengers in an all-economy layout. And while no airline has adopted this configuration and has leaned maybe more towards a two-class, three-class, and four-class configuration, it certainly highlights, at least to me, the sheer scale at which an A380 can really be configured. That sheer size I speak about comes thanks to the two complete double decks and four engines. From concept, it made it a unique offering for airlines that were looking to upsize their market share and meet demand in specific locations that they felt was only going to continue to grow. Moreover, upon launch, the A380 also posed operational challenges, requiring airports to modify infrastructure to accommodate it, which was truly costly. The A350 by contrast, well, it's a twin-engined aircraft with a much smaller footprint, offering seating for around 300 to 410 passengers, depending on the variant. We know they proceeded with two in the Dash 900 model and the larger Dash 1000. The A350 does have a smaller size. It has greater fuel efficiency. All these things make it more suitable for a broader range of routes and also airlines, whether you have short-haul regional operations to ultra-long-haul flying. Airlines can choose how they operate the 350 that's something that maybe isn't found with the A380 given its nature. Another significant difference is their design philosophy and even technology. The A350, while it's constructed primarily from advanced composite materials, allowing it to have a lower weight, better efficiency, and maybe also better align with airline requirements as we move into really the 21st century. The state-of-the-art aerodynamics I speak of really are also seen through quieter engines. The avionics also make it one of the more fuel-efficient wide bodies currently on the market and means it is applauded by the airlines that fly it in the sector. They label the plane as a true leader. However, the A380 by contrast, well, it relies more on your traditional aluminium construction and older generation engines. While these are powerful, don't get me wrong, they do result in higher fuel consumption, operational costs, and let's not even get into the continued maintenance that is required. And really, as airlines are attempting to lower their costs, the niche of the A380 will already now be filled by other aircraft types and is seeing minor adoption compared to maybe what Airbus had expected. The A350 was designed with flexibility in mind. It appealed to airlines that wanted a fleet solution capable of serving a wide variety of routes without the infrastructure constraints that the Airbus A380 had, for example. Regarding customer appeal, while the A380 focused on providing an open space for airlines to get a little bit more creative. As such, these airlines looked to redefine the customer offering with luxurious spaces, lounges, showers, and more to make it really a unique experience. Thanks to this, the A380 was made more popular, certainly with your established premium companies like Emirates, while the 350, well, it'll be adopted by premium airlines still, but it hasn't solely been just these type of companies. Instead, it acts as a more flexible and efficient plane, therefore able to 
to see broader adoption. But are the two aircraft alike? Despite their differences, they do share fundamental similarities in their roles with airline fleets, albeit occurring, maybe you'd argue, at different points across the last couple of decades. Both aircraft were designed with the intent to help airlines achieve fleet renewal and expansion global goals by offering cutting-edge technology moving forward. While these features were arguably more favourable at different points, the premise was something that was evident. Furthermore, each, in its own time, represented Airbus's flagship offering in the wide-body segment. Both aircraft have been instrumental in helping airlines elevate those long-haul strategies. The A380 enabled airlines to capitalise on high-demand routes, whether this between, say, London, Dubai, Sydney or Los Angeles. Across these markets, but many others that I didn't even touch on, passenger volume justified the use of such a large aircraft, and these airports were ones that were often slot-constrained. Airlines found a workaround that by flying in a larger aircraft maybe once a day instead of three 787s. Meanwhile, as for the A350, it's allowed airlines to operate more direct long-haul flights. This reduces the reliance on connections. It has opened up new city pairings that were not previously economically viable, and nowadays they are financially viable, making it a massive success for airlines and allowing them to dip into more markets right around the world. One thing that certainly does remain is airlines that operate the A380 and A350 often use them as flagship products to showcase service quality and innovation, among other leading features. The evolution of the aircraft, well, the trajectory of these two planes certainly tells a fascinating story about how much can change in what is such a short period of time. The A380 was once viewed as the rising aircraft for the new era of long-haul travel. However, its operational lifespan was cut substantially short compared to what Airbus envisaged when considering a plane for release. Rising fuel prices, advancements in twin engine efficiency, and even changing trends seen through passengers and airlines did make this an aircraft type that was less viable. And in 2019, Airbus announced it would cease production of the A380 due to dwindling orders, backlog, and interest. While Emirates continues to operate and invest in this aircraft, even the largest customer of the program has spoken about the certain limitations that it finds itself dealing with. The trajectory of the 350 is wildly different. Although the aircraft has benefited entering the industry later, it still sees substantial market success and remains now their flagship wide-body product. Efficiency and operational flexibility have made it favourable among airlines that want to reduce their fuel costs and emissions while not losing out on capacity and range. The A350 has been able to enjoy a much more widespread adoption and its sales are continuing to this day, with a backlog that'll make sure deliveries continue into 2030 and beyond, proving that it is a plane here to stay. As a result, and to really conclude, the A380 and 350 are certainly examples of innovation that has been achieved by being a clean sheet, but their trajectory was very different even if at certain points the purpose of the planes was the same. One model is no longer produced while the other continues to thrive. The A380 was never going to see the widespread adoption just because of the type of plane it was, but it still was attempting to represent a new era, much like what the A350 is doing for airlines now has consistently done for the last decade, its efficiency being at the forefront. I'd love to hear your take down below in the comments. Thanks very much for your support here on Globetrotting. If you'd like me to take a look at any other aircraft, well, also just let me know and I'll be more than welcome to add it to the backlog. Thanks again and I'll see you in a couple of days. And we'll fly.